Okay, now it's time to head into outer space. We're going to do a fly through through our solar system and just kind of have a look at how much water really does exist in our solar system because there's a new discovery that was made recently of another moon around Saturn that also has an ocean. So let's go on a journey through outer space, starting with the sun. Obviously, no water on the sun that we know of. First planet we come up to is Mercury, a little bit too close to the sun. You're going to need a, need a lot of sunscreen and an excellent relationship with your air conditioning repairman if you live there. Venus, terrestrial planet, meaning when you can actually set foot on the planet. Again, too close to the sun. But just perfect is Earth, 12,756 kilometers in diameter. Sure looks pretty from space, doesn't it? They get a little closer and see all the plastic floating in the ocean. Now, Mars, we know now that there is water on Mars in the form of ice, slightly below the surface and at the poles. Next, we go on to Jupiter, and Jupiter has the moon Europa, and Europa itself has twice as much water on it as our Earth itself. So now, we already know that there's water on Titan, the moon of Saturn, but now we know that this gigantic gas giant has another moon called Enceladus that has a sea up to 10 kilometers deep that lies below, below 40 kilometers of ice at the South Pole. They were able to discover this because Cassini on a flyby saw some water jets coming out from the South Pole. Good indication that there's water there. So we're going to just tilt the planet up a little bit here and you can see where the ocean is located and you can see where the jets are that Cassini first spotted in 2005. Another ocean. There is a lot the more water than by we know. Of which our scientific community is now reaching out through the additional airborne telescopes and stuff that we now have, the, the, the ones that are in orbit you know, around, that, that we are now discovering more and more planets uh, around more and more star systems. And we're discovering planets in the so-called Goldilocks uh, realm, where they're the proper distance from their sun relative to the size of their sun and the intensity uh, on which uh, liquid water can exist and other factors that could be a sustained, intelligent, sentient life. And, and support a highly technologically developed civilization. As Daniel said there, we are continuing to explore and now they're finding literally hundreds of planets that are in habitable zones. And remember the one thing everyone always used to say is there needs to be liquid water. There needs to be water, whether liquid or ice or something of that sort to sustain life. Now, there's a couple of things you gotta think about there. Number one, it's to sustain life as we know it. There might be other forms of life that don't function exactly the same as we do. And it now appears that water is abundant. If several moons within our solar system alone are loaded with massive oceans larger than our own oceans when it comes to uh, content, then that would lead one to believe that there are moons and potentially planets all throughout the solar system that have the same characteristics.